Ludwig van the music man. I haven't got any marijuana. I'm not registered for VAT. It must be a mugger. Well, I hope he makes it quick. I have six ravenous Doberman finches. Haven't you got a key? I didn't think I ought to use it. What are you doing? Oh, you know, just whiling away the time, contemplating suicide. I thought I'd find you out wallowing in self-pity. Nothing to touch it. Can I come in? Of course. Um, the place is untidy. I rather assumed it would be. Just sit light to it once a month or so, do you? I have a blitz every now and then. Looks as though it's been blitzed. Look, if I find any furniture underneath, can I sit down? Listen, it's half yours. I know. You haven't paid me for it. Oh, Philip, you're a great homemaker. Well, I go for the casual approach. Whiskey, or would you like something stronger? Oh, whiskey would be nice. Pint or a half? <laughs> well, how are you? Gordon's moved out. Ah. Haven't been very lucky with boyfriends since we broke up. Nope. Didn't get on with Christopher. Well, of course you didn't. He's thick as a lorry driver's sandwich. Well, <laughs> he is Ellen. He's got less conversation than Harpo Marx. Going to bed with that moron was the worst thing you ever did to me. Oh, don't start that. Cheers. You know what depresses me? <laughs> Tell me. What if, after all, you're the best I'll do? What? <laughs> Our marriage was about as exciting as an evening out at the laundrette. And you've about as much romance as an autistic orangutan. Do you know, there are some times when I think that I'm looking for something that just isn't there. That isn't meant as a compliment or anything. Oh, none taken. I mean, you're unbelievably self-obsessed. I mean, I don't believe it and I'm your wife. Ex-wife? You could bore for England. <laughs> Nobody talks like you do. Well, what brings you here? I was terribly depressed and I didn't want to waste it. <laughs> Is the rest of the house like this? No, no, it's just this room I keep nice. <laughs> God, you're squalid. Could I possibly stay here tonight? In the spare room? Yes, of course, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Not at all. Only I want to get abjectly plastered. <laughs> Actually, abject, it doesn't really mean... Oh, for God's sake, shut up, Philip. <laughs> yes. Tiresome little pedant. <laughs> God, you're boring. Well, this is quite like old times. <laughs> I've um, made ginseng tea this time. Have you ever had it? No. It's supposed to be good for you. I don't know. Might be something in it. <laughs> How are you and Gerald? Don't talk to me about Gerald. <laughs> God, you have never met anyone as insensitive and selfish as that man. He drives me to the edge of distraction. Oh, dear. I, I can't give him all of my time. I've got to work. There's got to be an income. God knows he does nothing, poncing around with his knots. <laughs> what? Macrame, that's his line. <laughs> You, a grown man knotting bits of string round a load of flower pots. I'd like to knot him round a flower pot. <laughs> Typical bloody Leo. Calls my patients the whiners and whingers, if you please. These are the people paying for his lasagna al forno and boeuf provençal, he seems to forget. Gerald does the cooking. Most of it. I haven't had a plate of food that hasn't been mucked about with for years. <laughs> I mean, I've got to do something. It's stagnating, Gerald and me. <laughs> anyway, how was your weekend? Well, <laughs> it was quite like old times, really. Spent fighting with the wife and doing housework. Mm. Have you and your wife found a solution to your marital problems? Indeed we have. 
Oh, good. We got divorced. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. Yes, uh, just for a moment. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> she went off with an artist. Hmm. Yes, then she left him for a woodworm eradicator from Bootle. <laughs> Bootle? Yes. He came to do their flat and got rid of both the Beatles and the boyfriend at the same time. He was evidently very efficient. Anyway, Ellen turned up late on Friday night and uh, stayed the weekend. Yes. Yes, that's right. Your wife left you thinning hair. What? You were worried about losing your hair. Well, yes. Really? Yes, well, you are losing it. Well, yes, I know. Mad. Uh, depressions. Uh, that's right, isn't it? Yes. How bad are they exactly? Well, I mean, it's difficult to say. Um... I mean, have you ever thought of suicide? <laughs> That's not the only treatment you've got, is it? Well, <clears throat> I haven't got any treatment, so we must find a way together of your being able to live with your problem. Yes. Sometimes this can seem almost insuperable. For instance, I'm seeing someone at the moment with a violence problem. How do you mean? He hits people. He's a skinhead. <laughs> Most of the sessions are taken up persuading him not to hit me. But it does interest me. I mean, I try and analyze his motives, try and arrive at what it is should be done. What, what, what do you think should be done? I think a little bastard should be locked up. <laughs> Perhaps we should have another look at your childhood. Look for influences. Yeah, you know, I was thinking the other day, talking of uh, uh, violence, of one influence. Uh, more tea. Oh, <clears throat> yes, thank you. You remember when you were a kid, that bowl on the sideboard? What? Now, I'm sure you had one. Everyone did. You kept things in it. What things? Well, useful things. Things you might need at a moment's notice. <laughs> Half a set of dentures. <laughs> Four hair grips and a threepenny bit. You know what I mean, that, that cigarette lighter that didn't work, last year's library tickets and a five-franc piece. Oh, yes. Yes, we, we had a watch in ours. Yeah, well, there you are. I wonder what happened to that. <laughs> well, do you know I'd forgotten all about that? It was luminous. <laughs> but anyway, go on. Yes, well, one thing that there always was, was a cartridge case. So much so that I, I, never, I never questioned it. In fact, the ornamentation of our house was almost exclusively lethal. Shell cases cut about to make useless coal scuttles and drinking vessels with dummy shells used as doorstops. I tell you, our living room was like a munitions dump. <laughs> we had a hand grenade made into a cigarette lighter. I mean, can you imagine? You offered people a light and they dropped down behind the sofa with their hands on their <laughs> I think my brother had that watch. <laughs> yes. So, what's the point of all this hand grenade stuff? Well, I mean, it just gave us a very odd attitude to weaponry. I mean, we sort of respected it. You know, I mean, this war thing must have been pretty good, because Mummy and Daddy polished bits of it and put them on the mantelpiece. <laughs> this tea is disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> Not the greatest. Gerald bought it. <laughs> Why does the old man keep saying his daughter's going to marry a Red Indian? <laughs> he calls him Chingachgook the Mohican. He's an ex-farm labourer from Devizes. His name's Alfred Chilcott. He shaves his head, leaving a central stripe, which he dyes a navy blue to match his fingernail. <laughs> really? Yes. How do you know? Oh, the old man confides in me, you know. We get on well. I say, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wonder if I could have a few words with you. Well, of course, Neville, of course. Come on in, draw up a chair. You know, I always enjoy chatting to you. It makes no demands on the intellect. <laughs> Thank you. It was only a few weeks ago the old man had a chat with you about work, wasn't it? Yes explaining to you what it was, and that he'd like you to do some. <laughs> that was the gist of it, yes. And was it last week that he found you in here stretched out fast asleep? <coughs> do I see hopes of promotion gleaming in your eyes, Natalie? Accosted by three witches at Hornsey Central this morning, were you? 
Hail to thee, Napley, that shall be claim supervisor hereafter. <laughs> it's just that Brabazon Balloon Company business. You remember they had a fire and you paid them £2,000? Yes. Even though the fire occurred three weeks before they took out a policy with us. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Letter. It was especially warm, I remember. Well, we all make mistakes. Of course. And the old man's just discovered this one. <laughs> Get out, Napoli. I want to inflict grievous bodily harm on this indolent wretch. <laughs> I don't want any witnesses. Excuse me. <coughs> does the Brabazon Balloon Company mean anything to you? Yes. Your father run it, does he? <laughs> Sleeping with the managing director's daughter, I own. Chairman of the board got photos of you indulging in homosexual practices, has he? I'm really very sorry. How long have you been with this company? Sixteen years. Yes, and in all that time I've only ever had two complaints about your work. One, you don't do any. <laughs> Two, what you do do is worse than useless. <laughs> Apart from that, you're a model employee. Two thousand pounds. You see, I made a mistake in the proposal. Oh, shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I don't want to hear your whinging, whining voice. Let me fulminate uninterrupted. My doctor says my cholesterol level is high because of my fondness for butter. Little does he know it's because I've got you working for me. <laughs> working against me. Every time I turn towards your department, my artery is hardened a bit more. <laughs> Any of that discerning scotch of yours, Lefebvre? Yes, of course. I've got the blood system of a sedentary octogenarian. And it's all because of you. I'm sorry, Rofe. Oh, good lord. Everyone makes mistakes. Oh, well... I mean, you don't make much else, but that's no excuse. <laughs> I apologise. I'm not shouting at you, you see. Ah, no. Two thousand pounds. What's that? I mean, we pay you much more than that every year, and that's money completely thrown away. <laughs> no. Have you ever stayed at the Claremont Hotel? That one near Duckett's Green? No. Don't. I was there last night. Brushed nylon sheets, stereophonic plumbing, Masters and Johnson Sex Olympics behind wafer-thin walls. <laughs> I didn't sleep a wink. Learnt a lot, but didn't sleep a wink. <laughs> so, what was I doing? Spending the night alone in a cheap hotel in my hometown, you're asking? Yes. Mm. You're married? Uh, well, she left me. Left you? Yes, yes. I never knew this. This must have been a terrible time for you. Yes, it was, yes. It was about then I started going to my analyst. Analyst? Yes. What? Well, Trick cyclist, you mean? Funny farm fellow? Yeah. Well, all this is a revelation, I must say. I've always thought of this little room as a, a peaceful backwater. When I pass those fire buckets, I always think I'm leaving real life behind and entering our own little Middle Earth. <laughs> I've always thought of you as the hobbit of armour life, quietly dozing away in an atmosphere of bovine contentment. Instead, it turns out it's more like Peyton Place. Well, I don't know. You still go to this shrink? Yes. He any good? No, not really. <laughs> but uh, we've, uh, we get on quite well now. I mean, he doesn't sort of charge me very often. We just sort of sit and chat, really, and I've grown rather fond of Dr. Collins. <laughs> uh, you were telling me about the Claremont Hotel. Oh, yes. Well, it's Alice, my wife, you know. She's gone off today with Miranda and Chingachgook to meet his people down in Wiltshire. <laughs> I dare say they've got a wigwam on Salisbury Plain. <laughs> no, Pan is all my fault, Miranda, marrying this Mohican lout. Something I did when Miranda was little. So Alice has gone into a deep sulk. I've never seen anything like it. It's horrendous at home. Dreadful. Couldn't stick it. Told her I had to head off his visit and booked into the Claremont. Needed a bit of time, a bit of peace to think it through, you know. Yes. Things aren't good. No. Dreadfully sorry to hear about your trouble. Oh, good Lord, I'm over no, no. I had no idea, old chap, no idea. Get out, Napley. Don't you ever knock? Mr. Rofe and I are having an important meeting. <laughs> Smarmy little Burke. <laughs> ah. 
I'm, I'm sorry to drop on you like this. Uh, no, no. Ah. What happened to your eye? I was hit, I'm afraid. Oh, no, the skinhead finally got to you. No, no. It was Gerald. <laughs> I'm... I'm really sorry to drop on you like this. No, no. You know, uninvited. Look, you're, uh, you're really very welcome. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. I, I'm supposed to be helping you. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean that if you... Oh, I, I know, I know. That's, that's why I came to you. I mean, you. You don't see things as being hopelessly compartmentalised. No. I mean, of all the people I see, I, I think of you as the most human. Well, that's nice. <laughs> oh... Hell, you're sympathetic. You're a really nice chap, Pete. Well, it's really nice of you to say so. It's Philip, actually. <laughs> Philip. You see, I don't even know your name. What a little shit I am. Oh, no. oh, what a Use the self and your god, what a failure. Gerald, right, you know. Uh, Ellen, this is Simon, my analyst. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, Ellen, my wife. Oh, yes. How was Bootle? <laughs> Pardon? Um, Simon's staying for dinner, Ellen. Am I? Oh, thanks, Pete. That's really nice. <laughs> He's a lunatic, Philip. I know. <laughs> Hi. Morning. Morning. <coughs> Terrific. Uh, this nightshirt, really comforting. Good. Is that well? Oh, like a top. Is a bed's wonderful. Yes, it is good, isn't it? I was in it before you arrived. <laughs> so you've really made great progress with our relationship. Pardon? How's the eye? Oh, better, thanks. I'm a bit worried, though. I'm seeing the skinhead today. <laughs> he might see it as a challenge. Coffee? Oh, please. White? Have you any powdered? Oh, it's uh, in that cupboard. Oh. Oh. Ooh, you've got cornflakes. <laughs> yes, help yourself. Uh, we have muesli. I hate muesli. Uh, trudging through all those oats. You know. And scrambled eggs. Oh, scrambled eggs are okay, surely. Not with mixed herbs and curry powder, they are. Mm. God, I, I hate food that's been mucked about with. God, I love cornflakes. <laughs> God, I hate Gerald. <laughs> when dejected, I always find my steps are bent towards this office. I'll admit it, you see. It's always useful having someone who's not busy working. The Mohican's back. Ah. I had a chat with him last night. He was working on his motorcycle. It's been going rather quietly lately, so he was taking the silencer off it. <laughs> so I went up and struck up a conversation with him. He speaks a language I found fitfully recognisable. I thought once I'd been talking to him, I might warm to him. You know, he's not as bad as I thought. The heart's in the right place, the strawberry grows beneath the nettle and so on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's the most vicious anti-social thug you can think of. <laughs> he seems to hate everything. You name it, he's got a rock against it badge. Ah. <laughs> well, why? I mean, this should be the most wonderful age. We've got everything, haven't we? 
anesthetics, contraception, music centers. <laughs> what more do people want? Hmm? I don't know. What's it all about, Rofe? What are we doing here? Well, you're doing sweet Fanny Adams, but you know. <laughs> You got kids? No. no. Oh, wise choice. Wish I didn't. You know, when I look back on all the major decisions of my life, I realize they were taken in a kind of unquestioning daze. Take my marriage. Yes. Why did I get married? I don't know. Well, there you are. Neither do I. <laughs> I mean, I was going out with Alice. I liked her. She wanted to. I thought, well, I'm 28. I suppose this is it. Yes. So we got married. A week later, they let off Britain's first hydrogen bomb. I've always been uneasy about that coincidence. Yes. Well, things went quite nicely. We had a two-toned Zephyr Zodiac, a contemporary suite and a television set with doors on. So we started a family. I see. Mm. Well, just because that was next. Yeah. Oh, God, then we had to go through it all, from wet nappies to our first drugs raid. <laughs> I can't bear to remember it. Edmund nearly did time, you know, for possession of marijuana. Just for possession? Well, he did have about a pound of the stuff. <laughs> which I gather is enough to set the whole Tory party conference singing the red flag. <laughs> what a chapter. Alice found it once, you know. He told her it was Lapsang Suchong. So she gave it to everyone at her next Tupperware party. Mm. But of course, he's against all that, you know, the Mohican. Is he? Oh, yes, drugs and all that. Yeah. Damn thing is, he and I seem to agree on quite a lot of things. He's very keen on Maggie, you know. Is he really? Yes, he's as true blue as his haircut. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's all very confusing, I admit it. But all this is as nothing. The real disaster is Alice. Really? Yes, she found my Claremont hotel bill. Now she thinks I've got a floozy. <laughs> well, Ludwig, old boy, it's just you and me again. At least I've got the place tidy for you. Oh, no. Gerald's had another outburst. <laughs> I'm going to vote Social Democrat. Mm -hmm. I don't want Watchtower, and I've got double glazing. No, you haven't. <laughs> Our windows are nearly as drafty as Stonehenge. <laughs> Look, you know last weekend... I remember it. We broke the world land speed housework record. Now, I know we fought a lot. You're not going to get the sentimental. Oh, good God, no. It's just that... I'm alone in this house. And I'm alone in my flat. It's expensive quarrelling down the telephone. So why not sulk face to face? For a bit. Oh, sure, nothing heavy. Please come in. <laughs> well, I thought I'd take you out to dinner, actually. Ah, oh, well, I've got to go out later on. Where are you going? I've got an appointment with my analyst, Simon. I've uh, made raspberry leaf tea this time. <laughs> Is that okay? It'd be perfectly splendid. <laughs> 